All right, got my 2003 Trailblazer. Lately, I've been having a problem with PO340. It started with um, cruise control not working intermittently and has eventually got to the point with intermittent stalling. Now, this isn't really going to be a video about fixing the PO340. It's more about the troubleshooting approach to PO340 because, I mean, anybody can go on YouTube and tell you just how to bang a sensor in. Fuck that. So yeah, I've been riding around with my scan tool and this cam sensor just waiting to catch this thing failing. This is the cam sensor right here. I've already got the connector undone because we're going to do some testing on it. And if it comes down to I'm replacing it, I'm, I'll bang it in for you. The other night the Trailblazer stalled, threw on the Turk check engine light. I didn't really document it on video, but um, pulled a 340 off and since then, it's been about three or four days driving the truck, it hasn't come back. And that's pretty much been the problem over the past couple months. So I'm going to use some super fancy tools to kind of catch this thing in the act and, you know, determine the needed repair from there. So, I've got the cam sensor connector on off. Let's see if we can uh, pop this guy open. Cool. And the brown and white wire is our uh, signal that goes back to the PCM. So I'm ready to go here. Got my Tech 2 graph in the uh, cam count, but I've had it before where that thing won't drop it, but it'll drop out on your scope. So back probing the brown and white here, the cam sensor. I've got a lab scope hooked up. And I'm just getting a good look at the, you know, the waveform. I don't know how good you guys can see it. I'll have better documents of this uh, coming up. So I've got all my stuff hooked up. And now the cam sensor is you know, suspected of being faulty, but I still got to see it fail. I mean, what can that take? If this, if this truck isn't throwing 340 every couple weeks, you know, I'm in the shop and it's not doing it now. What, you know, what can you do? So what I want to do now is I want to watch this thing on a scope, and I want to just kind of just tap the cam sensor with a you know small. Whatever. Again, you gotta be careful. You got that belt spinning, that fan moving. It's not doing shit. This one even passes the tap test, which in extreme cases, if you can tap on that thing and then the engine either clears up or runs rough again, you've got a bad cam sensor. Mine's not doing it. Cam sensor, 20 some dollars, you know, I'm, I'm not throwing it in there, especially if it wasn't my truck. People pay me to diagnose their vehicles, not just to guess and throw parts at it. I just saw it, it just crapped out. Did you see that? What I've been seeing on the graph here is, you know, a good spacing three times and then small spacing. But keep watching it. See, with the glare, it's really kind of hard to see. Yeah, see, we're not going to be able to pick up the camera. All right, well, you've got to excuse my primitive, my primitive uh, straight line drawing things. But what we actually saw was, this is kind of the gist of what the, the um, cam sensor should be. But what I saw, and I don't know if the camera picked it up, I'll have to double check that when I edit, is that this one little bar right here, it wasn't spaced out like it should be, you know, as compared to these three, you know, small ones. It was just like a little blip. Whether or not that blip will actually turn the check engine light on, it probably wouldn't. But could the PCM see that as a cam signal problem and then stop cruise control from working? Absolutely. Another thing, even though we caught it miraculously, it would be to go over you know, what did it take for it to, for the cruise control to not work? And what I noticed was, it was after making a um, quick stop, whether you're going in for cigarettes or get some gas or something, shut the truck off, go in, get your thing, come back out, and drive off. And that's when the cruise control sometimes wouldn't work. So it took some time to kind of piece together everything, you know, what's causing this? What can I do to try to duplicate it? And what it might have come down to today was, Riding with the Tech 2 on it again, riding with the scope on it, and duplicating a shutoff and you know, restart. Based on what I've seen though right now, even though you know we didn't uh, fail the tap test, I'm confident that I'm going to put a cam sensor in it and it's going to correct the problem in my trailblazer. 
Now I didn't record any of the live plot for you know what the tech two shows. Because I mean it's it's uh, kind of irrelevant. But we'll go back in the DTC and we have nothing. But again, like I said, that right there would have would have told the PCM turn off cruise control. Yeah, I mean there's a way you can catch it. The tech two has a little section for um, finding out why cruise control wouldn't work, but we're not really gonna get into that today. I had one at my work that they someone had already put a cam sensor on it. It was just a driveway diagnosis, basically plug in the code reader, PO340, you need a cam sensor. That wasn't a fix, because there's three wires that go to the sensor. And a wiring problem in any three of those wires would cause a PO340. If you really wanted to go and test the other wires, the red wire is a five volt reference signal from the PCM. You can check that one for five volts. You can make sure you have a ground on the pink wire. Um, if those two things are okay, then it's time to figure out what's going on with brown and white. All right, so we got the new cam sensor here. Let's go ahead and bang her in. I've already had to wiggle this connector out. It's a pain in the ass. Just jiggle the two sides loose and it'll pull back. And then you can push this tab down and get it out. I can't fit the camera and my hand down in there. So you're just going to have to trust me on that. Hey, get in there, you turd. A 10 millimeter socket on my quarter inch ratchet. And just so you know, that, that freaking pipe is super hot right now. I don't know if you can see me doing it. Not really. Well, you just have to trust me that I'm holding the socket with one finger and using the thumb and the other finger to uh, rotate the, the bolt into mm -hmm. a uh, counterclockwise direction. At work, I don't have the luxury of letting the you know the truck cool down first, so just wiggle him out. Make sure that the O-ring comes off. And I think like the Eckling ones, they have an orange ring instead. That might give you a clue to whether it's ever been replaced or not. Cam sensor. I'm not a fan of uh, Bork Warner or Eklin or any aftermarket company. I'm not even a fan of AC Delco. So get a little bit of engine oil and just rob some off your dipstick. Just put a little super light coating around this. Give it a little bit of lubrication. Can't find the hole. Now, I don't know the torque spec, and I'm not really going to run inside and grab it, but I am going to post it. One of my YouTube buddies started posting uh, torque specs, so I'm going to do the same. It'll be in the description. Well, before we do that, I'm going to go back on brown and white. I'm going to start her up. Alright, got, just got the new cam sensor put in and it reads exactly the same. We've got our same uh, square wave that we had earlier, which if I pause it, we have our three big gaps and then our three little gaps. I don't know what the fancy words for that shit is and to be honest, I don't give a fuck. I just care what it looks like. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned that even with the high dollar GM scan tool, it doesn't tell you everything. It took having a lab scope to determine that we had a failing cam sensor. We learned that if you have a PO340 and you just throw a cam sensor at it, you're just changing parts. In my opinion, if you took your I-6 Trailblazer to a shop and they charged you, you know, an hour's labor for a diagnostics, just by plugging their code reader in and pulling up a PO340, uh, they suck. You should never bring your car back to them, ever. Um, Diagnostic time is doing stuff like this. It's it's verifying circuits. It's uh, seeing the failure, you know, before you condemn the part, and it's what separates the you know the parts changing chumps to you know the pros like me. You know what I mean? So what else did we learn? The scan tool, lab scopes the future. In the future, you never know with freaking technology. The
breakthrough lab scope might come through that's actually going to be affordable for, you know, technicians of all types. I know me, myself, uh, this, this insight, this is my buddy let me borrow. I don't do enough stuff like this here to justify buying a scope just yet, so. Hey, see here, man, we don't just replace parts. Well, with the maintenance, I mean, that's all you're doing is replacing parts. But I don't just replace parts, I test everything. Even if I'm like convinced without a shadow of a doubt that $25 is going to fix the problem, I'm busting out the test equipment and I'm making sure that I'm not wasting my time or money. And that's how I do it with my customers. You feel me? So anyway, if you like what you see, subscribe to my shit. I just noticed I'm missing a bolt right here. The book. Alright. Maybe that's why the light's coming on. If we wanted to really go back here, look, I'm like yelling, if we wanted to really go back here.